Make sure to use code BANGLE at sign up on FanDuel for a $20 deposit bonus. And check out my second channel for other games coming up like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Call of Duty Black Ops 4. As well as my third channel with collaborations with some of your favorite YouTubers. Let's get into the video. What's going on guys? Bangle again here coming back at you with another video today. I am sick, but the show must go on. And today that show is going to be at Troy as we face the 5-1 Troy Trojans. Finally, Sun Belt Opener. That's our class. That is our conference, I should say. We are in the Sun Belt. We just haven't had anything that shows that over the course of this entire season here in Week 8. We are 2-3, and three, currently looking to even things up, go 3-3, three and three, sit at 500. Wouldn't be the worst thing. Troy is going to be a tough test. But before we do that, we have some recruiting, also have a head coach upgrade to get to. People also wanted me to check out some prospects that maybe didn't have, uh, that had, a, you know, like a low lock percentage. Let's do like less than 50% and uh, just see what's out there, you know? Might look for some, let's, let's, okay. <laughs> let's change it, let's look for like any four stars with low lock percentage. How many, 35? Might we just wanna start offering some, uh, some scholarships. Chris Porter, five-star QB scrambler, four, five, six, 40 time. I mean, we just might try to offer on a lot of these guys. In order to do that, we're gonna have to take off some players from our recruiting board that we have no shot to get. So in battle, we're not gonna get like any of these players. So let's just remove them from our board. Like we are far behind on so many of these players. Don't want a lot of them either. And uh, we actually do have a good shot at getting uh, Greg Falks, but he's not that good. Like he's okay. He's a 71 overall. We could scout him more. I'm not going to do that just yet. Let's go ahead and remove some of these guys. Just so we can offer on some of those top prospects that maybe, just maybe, we can bring in to Ozark State. Alright, let's go ahead and open up the coach skill trees. And see what we can do here. It's got to be recruiting. So we can open three locked recruits per season. I'd rather do scouting, I think. I think that'd probably be better for us. So the next level is... Uncover 100% of a prospect's true skills each week for 50 points. Hell yeah, dude. I am down for that. Alright, let's go ahead and look at some of these new players on our recruiting board. Will we be able to get any of them? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. But, there's no harm in at least trying for some of these guys. We went after a lot of athletes. Let's go ahead and check them out. So, Bobby Caldwell is one of them. Colby Spencer is another. A Juco... Uh, you know, college transfer. So he's really playing for television exposure. I mean, we're going to offer scholarships just to see if there's a chance we can bring some of these guys in. I think it's not the worst idea. So I guess um, we'll try that. We're done with our points. Like, maybe we can take away in some areas and add them. Might not be the worst to look into that. Like, Shelton Neal doesn't need all these points at this at this point. He's pretty much locked in going to Ozark State. I'm done with Pete Riley. We're just wasting points for no reason on him. I don't know why, but I am. So if there's a shot to get these guys, we're going to go for it. Uh, if, again, if you guys have any tips, try to be specific in the comment section below, and I will try to live up to that, you know, your request as best I can. But here we go. Outlaws looking to dominate Troy in their Sun Belt opener at Troy. They're much better than we are. But again, it's that level of heart. I don't want to be in the spread option. No. I got to change that. I'm going to restart. All right, so our pass offense is actually number three in the entire nation. That's really where we, uh, where we strive to perform well, and we do. Troy's a pretty good team, though. Five and one. It's sort of our toughest test of the season that we realistically have a chance to win. Obviously, Oklahoma and Alabama, they were tough tests. There was a slaughter. We had no shot. This one, I think we can win. Just got to play good today. Got to play well. We're in the alternate uniforms. You guys will see in a minute. I'm excited, ready, raring to go. Let's go, Ozark State. Show the Trojans what we're made of. They're no USC. Veterans Memorial Stadium at Troy. The Outlaws... Currently 2-3, looking to 
go 500 on the season with a win here today at Troy. Will be a tough test as we've talked about already, but maybe, just maybe, the Outlaws can look to go 1-0 in the first ever time wearing these alternate uniforms. We'll certainly have to see. Our conference opener, here is the Outlaw, Chris Outlaw for your Ozark State Outlaws taking a big shot. But that is the man with the plan. Pedro Goddard looking to lead the way and hopefully secure this victory with the rain coming down. Hopefully it symbolizes the end of Troy's season. I think a loss would probably really hurt them for going away uh, to the Sun Belt Championship. We're going to roll out with Goddard. Not really finding much. And he's going to break a tackle. This is what Pedro Goddard brings to the table. He's got a cannon for an arm. Not really, but he is somewhat accurate. But he can run. Gotta love it. That's open. Goddard hits Cody in stride. Look at him go. Riley Cody, the backup running back, getting more and more involved as the weeks go on. Goddard's second pass is complete. 29 yards for the running back. Wide open over the middle. That is Ryan Muller, another player that continues to get more and more targets as the season goes on. And if he continues to play well, he's going to get more and more targets. It's just the way it works. There's a pitch to Kedrick Cunningham. Backup quarterback turned wide receiver, in this instance turned running back. This offense is getting creative, and we're finding ways to win. Let's just let's keep it going. Speed option. Pitch to Darren Maxwell. Nothing but grass ahead of him. And Darren Maxwell is in for the touchdown. The Outlaws off to a hot start offensively in these away alternates. And Darren Maxwell puts us on the board first. Should be 7 0. Let's see what this defense is made of. Apparently, nothing as Montreal Gardner, the middle linebacker over the middle, just watches that pass go right past him to Dominic Walker for a big gain to start things off. We can't let Long John Brandon Silvers get going here. Cannot let it happen. And here's Sean. Oh my goodness. Shun churning ahead. Another big game. And this hurry up offense is not stopping anytime soon from what it looks like. This Ozark State defense is just disappointing week in and week out. It's a screen. No one read it at all. Get there, Mark Fenner. He does, but Shun picks up another first down, this time on a catch. And this Troy hurry up offense continuing to give us trouble here. All right, third and one. Come on, defense. Stop Anderson. Nah, he picked up the first. Jesus. Who is this guy? Josh Anderson refusing to go down. Lobbed up to Wyatt. And Justin Wyatt has the touchdown. I'm not really sure how Silver's got that pass over the defense. Just perfect location, and Troy answers our touchdown. Both teams on the board with first possession touchdowns. 7-7 here at Troy. Nothing an outlaw loves more than a shootout. Hoping we win this duel. Let's go, outlaw. All right, not really. Rolling out with Goddard. Have RB as an option. We're going to take it himself and slide forward first down. All right, big third down. Probably four down territory with where we are in the field. Let's try to convert it anyway. Underneath, Muller. Complete. Love it. That's open. Good throw from Goddard, and it's Ryan Muller again. Was that his third, fourth catch already in the first quarter? Three catches, 47 yards. Let's try to get him a touchdown. I think we're going to have to win this game today via clock management. Here's the read option. Goddard, great block up the middle by Jake Rodriguez. And Pedro Goddard into the end zone for the touchdown. 11 yards on the ground. And this offense looks unstoppable right now. Read option working to perfection. And if we can just get the ball last, score last, win the game, I'll take it. For this Troy offense, they've been difficult to stop on the first drive. We'll see what they can answer uh, and do here on the second. Coming up next. 
Chase him down, Watts. Oh no. It's gonna be a big gain. Not that bad, but pretty close to the first down. And it seems like every time Troy calls a play, it's like a guaranteed 8 to 15 yards, no matter what. Make a play! Oh my god, you're so bad. You're so bad. Is that Lightning McQueen, number 95, out there? Just put your hands up. It's an interception. That's such a good pass. Dominic Walker into the end zone for the touchdown. Silvers, 9 of 9 for 79 yards and two TDs. No defense being played here today. It's like a Big 12 game. Somewhat fitting because uh, Troy almost looks like Oklahoma. And we, you know, look a lot like Oklahoma State right now. So maybe it is a Big 12 game. Just hiding under different names with worse players in the Sun Belt. Second and 10. We're going up for Rodriguez. Can't get the pass off in time. That could have been a huge game. This is a huge third down. If we don't convert, we're probably going to have to punt. And uh, if we can't stop the Troy offense, I'm not sure how we're going to win this game. But Ryan Muller, wide open down the middle of the field. If that pass is more on a line, that's a lot more than just 30 yards. But Muller goes out, makes a great diving catch to keep this drive alive. No point in punting in this area of the field. We could pin him real deep. I don't trust it. Someone's going to get open. And it's going to be Pedro Goddard. Outrun the defensive end. Goddard. Huge solo effort to pick up the first down. That's why we got aggressive. I will say, though, this Troy front seven has really shut down the run. And I would like to run more. And it's going to have to be runs with Pedro Goddard. Touchdown. On just that. He got stood up near the goal line, but extended across. Picked up the score. And the shootout continues. The Outlaws always stay gunslinging. 21-14 after the extra point in favor of your Ozark State Outlaws. Oh, that was almost a user pick. I didn't commit all the way. I read it and then stopped. Oh, my goodness. Come on, Gardner. He just got pancaked. Just hold him to a field goal. Big stop here on third and three would probably force a field goal try, and then we could actually extend this to a two-score lead before half. That needs to happen. I think we received to start the game, too. Incomplete. That's huge. That's so big. His first incompletion of the entire game. Please take the points. Kick is up. Splits the sticks, and Troy... Has their first non-touchdown drive of the game. However, they are three for three inside the red zone. 21-17. They get the ball at half. We have to score before the half. It is so important. This could be like the drive of the game right here. There we go, Darren Maxwell. His first big play of the game. Well, obviously he had a touchdown. But that was just on a well-designed option play. They got him a wide open pitch. First great individual effort by him. This offense is not the problem. We're making it happen. The defense, that's really where we seem to have most of the question marks. And what happened there? What was that? We're going to try to split that. Let's go! Gabriel Timmons! Down the middle of the field with the stiff arm inside the 10. Gotta love a great third down conversion. Safety was confused. The linebacker didn't play deep enough. And no one did their job. Gabriel Timmons, huge gain. This two tight end thing we got going on is pretty great. Gun empty. Let's send Francisco on a slant here. We got him. Roland Francisco, the true freshman with another touchdown on this season. And Goddard continues to light up the score sheet. This time with his first passing touchdown of the game. 28-17 Troy should be the score after this extra point. And if we can stop the Troy Trojans from getting into the end zone before the half, we're going to be in a great position. Oh my goodness, Blankenship, can you react to the ball please? What is that reaction time? Look at him. The ball is floating in the air. He has no idea about it. That is unbelievable. 
They're totally going to score before half. Oh, it's a great read option. We shut down the running back completely. But Brandon Silvers... I mean... He just, he just made this drive look way too easy. That was so open. I noticed it too late, and it's picked off by Rookard. God, man. Rookard is going to take this back all the way to about the 15, 16 yard line. So frustrating. It's the lack of arm strength that makes that such an easy play for the safety. Gotta be, gotta know that can't happen. Got to know we can't make that throw. Oh, my goodness. He's short of the goal line, though. I think we're going to save a touchdown with that tackle. But it's unfortunate. Troy's still going to be down. They get the ball at half. For the start of the third quarter, they will be down by one point. Third and eight. Tell me we can stop this team. We have to. We really do. I can't even get to Montreal Gardner. But it is short of the first down. Why are you throwing that? Is Troy going to punt here? Oh my god, they might. They're going to punt the ball. Wow. What a huge stroke of fortune. Go, Goddard. Let's go. Slide. Sliding is some weak stuff, but... I'm not turning the ball over again, if I can help it. I'm sure it'll happen. Almost the same exact situation that we faced earlier. See if we can convert here. We're gonna try to throw it. It's open and caught by Roland Francisco. 39 yards inside the five. These are clutch conversions. Goddard out of the pocket is a menace. Are my least favorite in real life play call is a goal line PA boot. Let's see how it works in the game. To perfection. Nope, he, caught, he dropped the ball. Roland Francisco dropped the ball. That's an easy touchdown, too. So we're going to settle for the field goal attempt here. I think it's our best option. Kick is up and good. 31-27. We're going to force Troy to uh, go for a touchdown in order to take the lead. Field goal does not tie. Field goal does not take the lead. We're in good position. If we just hold these four points over the course of the game, I'd be happy, but I don't know. It doesn't seem likely. Third and eight. Come on. Big stop here. And it's an incomplete pass. Please punt the ball. Make the field goal look incredibly smart. They are going to punt. I'm very confident they can convert the fourth and eight. But uh, they're going to punt. Oh my god, he muffed it. You can't muff the punt, outlaw. You cannot punt the muff the duh, and the punt the muff. That's not right. Third down and ten. This has not been a great drive for us. Just a lot of close, you know, incompletions. RB's open though. Goddard finds Ryan Muller. There's a great spin move. He's still on his feet. 30 yards. Ryan Muller has had quite a day. Roland Francisco has been inconsistent. We haven't really targeted Karan Kirkpatrick that much after his drop or even before. I was, I think his one target of the game he dropped. But other guys are stepping up. And that's what we needed. Oh, man, that's not what we needed. Muller drops it now. You, I mean, you got to be kidding me with the dropsies here. Can anybody catch? You know who I bet can catch is uh, Gabriel Timmons. We already know about him. We're going to go for that one, though. Over the top, complete to the ex-quarterback, Kedrick Cunningham. Still listed it on the QB depth chart. But, uh, yeah, he's a wide receiver now. And he's the one who catches the ball, ironically. What a touch pass from Pedro Goddard. Going to increase our lead even more. 38-27 in favor of the Gunslinging Outlaws. Hell yeah. Oh, that's a big play. That's a big play by Montreal Gardner. Obviously, he didn't really make a tackle there. But, force him out of bounds is going to count as a tackle. And, it's a loss of five. Get pressure! Oh, that's going to be a touchdown, too. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. Silvers to Flakes. Huge touchdown. It's a fantastic pass. I just... I can't believe we have no secondary at all. 
Still a good lead. We just got to convert here, score a touchdown, and we're going to be in business. As long as we can keep them out of range, we're going to be fine. No turnovers. Keep the offense moving. Recipe for success there. Second and 15. Sounds like a good time to run the ball, right? Maybe. Third and eight. Last play before the fourth quarter. Looking for something. Oh my goodness, that's not it. That's not it. That's not it. Now we actually will have to punt the ball for the first time today. Let's just hope it's a good one. Uh, okay. Is that a touchdown? Yeah, it is. Emmanuel Thompson, five yard TD to the outside on an out. And Troy will take the lead for the first time today. Likely will be 41-38. And this is what we had to avoid. We had to avoid this. Letting Troy get the ball back. It was almost bound to be a touchdown. And uh, now we're playing from behind. A lot of time left on the clock. This is not what we wanted. We're going to try and control the clock. Let this be the last possession of the game. It's going to be easier said than done, though. On the run, Goddard, please! It's complete to Rodriguez. Didn't really want to get out of bounds there, but that is a huge 20-yard catch on third down. Clock keeps moving. Clock management has been fantastic so far. Here's a great slot option by Pedro Goddard. Love it. We need to get some more seconds off the clock, though. Under two minutes now. Second and four. Here we go. Good play. Goddard. Don't fumble. Don't fumble. I think running is the call here. Set up a block. Lead block. Goddard. Eight-yard pickup. Second and two. Just outside of the goal line. Second and two. Here we go. That's open. And it's... Oh, my goodness. What is that throw? We're so lucky that wasn't intercepted. That was the ball game. Here we go. Third and two. 20 seconds to play. Goddard takes it himself. And he is stood up. What we're gonna do is call a timeout. We're gonna wait to like, I don't know, five seconds. And we're gonna call a timeout and think about this decision. Obviously, a field goal ties the game. I think we gotta go for the win. I really think we gotta go for the win here. I think we gotta go for the win. I don't think we can hang with Troy in overtime. I really don't. Timeout now comes from the Troy sideline. Get Goddard some stamina back. I'm down. Call as many timeouts as you want. This is the weakest box we've seen all, all day. Let's snap the ball. Handoff goes to Maxwell. He's into the end zone. Touchdown. Let's go. Ozark State into the end zone for... The touchdown, it's Darren Maxwell. And we have taken the lead with two seconds to play. Unbelievable. Extra point is up and good. 45-41, Ozark State over the Troy Trojans with just two seconds to play. And here is the squib kick. Hill gets it and Hill is down. Game over. Ozark State has pulled off the victory over the 5-1 Troy Trojans in what may have been, it may have been the best game of the entire series thus far. It still is, you know, young. This is only our fifth game, or sixth game, I should say. We're going to improve to 3-3. Three and three. What a victory. The best in franchise history. I would say for sure, in, in you know, program history, rather. That was a tough game, but we did it. Pedro Goddard did it. Darren Maxwell helped us out in a huge way. What a game that was. An ESPN Classic game. What was the score? 607. Game ranked number 5. That was quite the game. That was quite the game. Goddard outlasts the Trojans defense in a 45-41 shootout. And a shootout it was for the Outlaws. What a game, what a victory. 
and uh, we have a bye week in week nine. We will do that here before calling it an episode. And then week 10 against Western Kentucky. We travel to play the Hilltoppers. They might actually be coming to us. I don't really have an idea. For our offensive coordinator, we have an upgrade. We're going to start with the defense, though. I think it's, like, probably the best decision to go with, um, charge. You know, keep the pass rush up as best as we can. So we're going to go with that. And then for offense, um, don't really care for injury and stamina. Or injury and stamina, excuse me. We're going to go, uh, plus two carry. So... Those are our coach skill upgrades. So on some of these players with the low lock percentage, Larry Jones, we've offered a scholarship to. We're not that far behind him. Colby Spencer, we're pretty far behind. I think we're, you know, pretty much, there's no chance we get him. But Chris Porter, a quarterback, New Iberia, Louisiana, scrambling type. We could potentially get him. We're not that far off. There's a, I mean, it's, it's certainly possible. It really is. Bobby Caldwell is another one. We are not that far behind him. We could come in and maybe pull off a steal. I don't know. All right, so Trevor Tringen, the athlete, aka free safety, commit to Colorado State. But we are in a recruiting battle with pretty much everybody else. And oh no, a 53 overall fullback recruit has locked us out. Unfortunate. Hate to see it. You really do. Uh, who cares? All right, let's check out recruiting before we end this episode. I mean, there's a chance we could bring in some of these players. Derek Higgins, I think we can pull in. This is a gigantic one. This would be so huge because this is a very, very good player. Really need to bring him in. Uh, as far as... I guess... Let's check out all positions. Let's go, let's go quarterback. Chris Porter, is there any chance we get him? There actually is. We're really not that far behind. Halfback, Darren Roberson. Looks like we're going to get him very easily. Fullback. Oh, no. We're in Poland. Tough. Um, probably not going to get Anthony McNeil. Wide receiver. Not that far behind on Larry Jones. Let's up this to 500 per week. And then Antoine Fleming. I mean, are you good even? A speed. Oh, he looks like he could be pretty good. But maybe not as a... Uh, as a wide receiver, maybe as something else. He can't really catch, but he has decent, well, I don't know. I mean, we'll offer him a scholarship. See if there's some way we can bring him in. He's pretty good, he's a four-star recruit, so pretty much better than anything we else got uh, going on. Trying to get a lot of offensive linemen to come to the school. Uh, lead on Chris Brown, lead on Quentin Carter, lead on Antonio Madison, very close on Shannon Ball. We're in a pretty good spot on those guys, guards, Pretty much the same deal. Eddie Burgess is going to be a difficult player to get. We'll see if we can end up getting him. We'll get Bo Barnett for sure. Center, we're not going to get Corey Jones. Defensive end, going to get Shelton Neal probably. Ben Hubbard will be tough. And then no shot on Adam Walton. Defensive tackle, I hope we get Ryan Harris. Maybe you're going to get Donnell Mason. And then Joey Coker is going to be tough as well. Outside linebacker, Nick Olsen. I like to think we could get him. Kendall Offord, I'd like to think we can get him as well. No middle linebacker. Cornerback, Derek Higgins, we need to get. That's going to be really tough. And then Willie Mays, for sure. Uh, Steven Sims, he's not that good. But, I mean, we're not far behind on him. Maybe he'll be better. Who knows? Brian Hicks, no way. And then no way on Jonathan Arrington. And, of course, Pete Riley, there's not a chance. We're not going to be able to get a kicker. Larry Flowers, the athlete. How do we have the lead on him? Oh, he's a punter. Excuse me. I thought we went to athlete. I'm like, what the hell? But I really want Bobby Caldwell. Gonna be tough. Greg Fowles gonna be tough. Doug Denman. Hopefully we bring him in. Colby Spencer. Almost no shot at this point. And then Trevor Tringen went to Colorado State. That's gonna do it for this episode. Hello, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I will see you in the next one. Take it easy. No!